Hello guys, welcome and welcome to Meteor Academy, one of the leading academy in training nurses in their nursing competitive exam IELTS OIT training as well as abroad nursing placement services. And today's topic we are going to discuss about important medical surgical nursing content. And if you like this video, please like it, share it, subscribe it and don't forget to click on the bell icon. And in medical surgical nursing, which topic we are going to discuss and what way it is going to be? See, obviously it is not going to be like a regular one. That is regularly we used to discuss about MCQs, right? So this time we are not going to discuss about an MCQs. We are going to discuss a different thing that is, you know, fracture. In a fracture, a normal types of fracture are there. So, but we are not going to specifically focus on normal types of fracture like complete fracture, incomplete fracture, simple fracture, compound fracture, uh, communicated fracture. We are not going to discuss about all those things. We are going to discuss uh, fractures with uh, different uh, terminologies like, you know, uh, Potts fracture, uh, Coolidge fracture, Smith's fracture. Upon these uh, three types of fracture is known to everyone so apart from these three there are many other fractures which are uh, very easy to understand but still uh, we are lacking the knowledge on it so those fracture we are going to discuss in detail in a easy and understandable way let's see in detail let's begin with Jefferson fracture so what is Jefferson fracture? It is also called as burst fracture. So let's see in detail about it. When there are both anterior and posterior arch of the vertebral column, that is the first vertebral bone atlas is getting fractured, then it is called as Jefferson fracture. How it will get affected? How the bone is getting damaged or getting fracture? It is because of the occipital condyle. So what is occipital condyle? It is a part which is present in the base of the skull. Because of any uh, injury, this occipital condyle, this specific part, it is giving pressure over the C1 bone. You can see in this image very clearly, the left side image, there is a damage or fracture in the anterior as well as in the posterior part of the vertebral bone. The center of the anterior arch is broken as well as the posterior part of the C1 bone is broken. Okay, so this is the exact uh, burst fracture or Jefferson fracture. There are different types of classifications. See the type 1 that is in the fracture of the posterior arch only. You can see in the right side image fracture of the posterior arch only that is type 1. Jefferson fracture and fracture of anterior arch only that is type 2 fracture of both anterior and posterior arch this is exactly called as Jefferson fracture and type 4 fracture of the lateral part of the vertebral bone okay so because of occipital condyle compression over the C1 vertebral bone there is a fracture exactly in the anterior and posterior arch of the vertebral bone this is called as Jefferson fracture also called as burst fracture here the keyword is Jefferson fracture means fracture at C1 or burst fracture and the, in the region of atlas that is the first vertebral bone okay the next one is March fracture. It is also called as March stress fracture. Why it is called as stress fracture? Because if the person is continuously stressing metatarsal bone, underline the word metatarsal bone, then the person is prone for getting this type of fracture. And it is very commonly seen in athletics because they are the one who used to do the regular activities like jumping, running. So they are stressing the small, thin, lean metatarsal bone and they are prone for getting fractures. In this image, you can see the right side image. There is a fracture in the fibula. Don't look at it. We are not going to discuss about the fracture in fibula. I just want to show you how the metatarsal bone is. As I mentioned already, it is a long, thin bone okay and in the left side image you can see there is a minute crack in the second metatarsal bone 
See, this type of mod stress fracture it is very commonly seen in the second and third metatarsal bone so if there is a fracture in the metatarsal bones anywhere in from the first uh, metatarsal to the fifth metatarsal anywhere there is a fracture especially you can see this fracture as i mentioned already in the second and third metatarsal bone then it is called as march fracture or march stress fracture next one what is jones fracture a jones fracture is the fracture of the bone of the pinky toe side of your foot what is pinky toe side of your foot it is nothing but fifth metatarsal bone see there is a break between the base and shaft of the fifth metatarsal bone of the foot base means the last end shaft means middle of the metatarsal bone so there is a fracture or a break in between base that is the last part and shaft that is the middle part of the bone that is called as jones fracture you can see very well in these two images see the fifth metatarsal bone there is a fracture where is the fracture in between the base as well as the shaft there is a fracture in between the base and the shaft then it is called as what jones fracture so what are all the keywords you should remember for jones fracture it is commonly seen in the pinky side of the metatarsal bone that is the fifth metatarsal bone is getting affected in between base and the shaft then it is called as jones fracture the next one is hutchinson fracture also called as chaufer's fracture let's see what is that chaufer's fracture is also known as hutchinson fracture it is a type of oblique fracture underline the word oblique fracture where it is present it is present in the radial styloid process that is in the forearm radial bone you can see in the image you can see radius as well as ulnar bone and the fracture is present in the radial bone which part of the radial bone that is styloid process near to the wrist radial styloid process is present there is a oblique fracture so this type of fracture is called as hutchinson or chaufer's fracture next one is barton fracture barton fracture or fractures on the distal radius or fracture dislocation of the distal radius extending into the radio corpal joint what they want to say is there is a fracture in the distal radial see in chaufer's fracture also there is a fracture in the distal radius but there is no dislocation whereas here in barton fracture there is a fracture in the distal radius and dislocation is present and it is extending to the radio corpal joints it is extending till what corpal bone okay there is the bone is dislocated and it is extending till the corpal bone okay so this type of fracture is called as barton fracture okay many are getting confused with chaufer's and barton fracture the key word to remember this barton fracture is dislocation will be present in the barton fracture whereas in chaufer fracture there is no dislocation only oblique fracture will be there and if this fracture this barton fracture if it is seen in the dorsal region of the radial bone then it is called as dorsal barton fracture if it is present in the ventral bone that is ventral radial bone then it is called as ventral barton fracture the next one is cotton fracture see what is that malleolus bone which is present in the foot it is getting fractured in three areas that's why it is called as trimalleolar fracture cotton fracture is also called as what trimalleolar fracture where which bone is getting affected here malleolus bone is getting affected what are all the parts of the malleolus bone is getting affected medial lateral posterior this three part is involved that's why it is called as trimalleolar fracture you can see in this image very clearly the lateral medial posterior part of the malleolus bone is getting affected in this case we used to call it as cotton fracture or trimalleolar fracture boxer fracture a boxer fracture is a break in the neck of the fifth metacarpal bone underline the word break in the 
neck of the fifth metacarpal bone in the hand it is usually happens when you punch an object at a high speed if you are punching with a high speed the fifth metacarpal bone neck is getting fractured see in this image it is very clearly shown there is a fracture in the neck of the fifth metacarpal bone okay so this type of fracture is called as boxer fracture bumper fracture you might be wondering uh, why it is called as bumper fracture it is because of the car bumper hitting the lower leg of the person and the tibial plateau that is the part of the tibial bone which is present just below the knee it is getting affected or fracture then it is called as what tibial plateau fracture you can see in this uh, definition tibial plateau fracture were originally termed a bumper fracture also it is called as fender fracture it is caused because of the hitting of the car which part of the car you can see in the image the bumper part of the car which is hitting the lower leg of the person just below the knee the car bumper is hitting so it is called as bumper fracture and the key word to remember here is the fracture of the lateral condyle tibia because the tibial bone is affected which part of the tibial bone lateral condyle uh, tibia you can see in the right side image the lateral condyle tibial is getting affected or fracture here that's why it is called as what bumper fracture the next one is aviator fracture previously we have seen the bumper fracture now we are seeing the aviator fracture both are related to you know uh, like uh, vehicles right bumper it is caused because of the car aviator means it is the one related to flights or uh, jet planes right see why it is called as aviator fracture during world war 1 the pilots if they are if the plane of the pilot is crashed the plane will hit the floor Uh, or floor boards very fastly that time the pilot's foot is severely forcefully dorsiflex upward direction dorsiflex in the upward direction okay so that time the talus bone is getting affected otherwise talus bone that is the ankle bone okay it is getting affected or fractured then it is called as what aviator fracture see you can see in this image very clearly Uh, the talus bone is marked in the red color this talus bone is getting damaged because of severe dorsiflexion severe dorsiflexion so this type of fracture is considered as what aviator fracture here the key word to remember is fracture of the neck of the talus fracture of the neck of the talus okay the next one is coolies fracture This is a familiar term which we come across in many exams, right? Fine. So, what is Coolis fracture? Fracture of the distal radius, which is very close to the wrist joint, and it is caused by the fall and dorsi severe dorsiflexion of the hand is taking place, and there is a damage to the distal radial bone because of severe dorsiflexion, damage to the distal radial bone. Then it is called as Coolis fracture. You can see in this image very clearly. there is a severe dorsiflexion and there is a fracture in the radial bone and what deformity will be seen in the coolis fracture dinner fork deformity it is because of the dislocation of the radial bone the hand and the forearm totally changed their position like a dinner fork so it is called as dinner fork deformity seen in coolis fracture the next one is smith fracture it is just opposite to coolis fracture in coolis fracture severe dorsiflexion is taking place in smith fracture severe ventral flexion is taking place because of this severe ventral flexion there is a fracture in the distal radial bone which present near to the wrist this type of fracture is called as smith fracture you can see the differentiation coolis fracture dorsal displacement of the distal fragments smith fracture ventral displacement of the distal fragment distal fragment in the sense the radial distal bone okay and you can see the types of falls and also the deformity dinner fork deformity seen in coolis fracture gordon spade deformity seen in smith fracture you can see the spade and dinner fork here so this is how you have to remember 
The next one is pots fracture which is also a very familiar term. A pots fracture is a fracture affecting one or both of the uh, fibulous malleoli okay during activities such as landing from the jump. If the person is landing from the parachute jump uh, landing very forcefully in the ground then there will be a damage to the malleoli part of the uh, fibula. So this type of fracture is called as what? Pots fracture. So guys, hereby I am ending the session. If you have any doubts anywhere, you can drop your message in the chat box. And if you want to contact us, please contact in the mail ID and phone number given here. So till now we discussed about different terminologies and the meaning and explanation discussion about different types of fractures. If you know or come to know any other fracture, if you want to know about any other fractures, then you can please comment us in the chat box. And if you like this video, please like it, share it, subscribe it and don't forget to click on the bell icon. Thank you.